everyone has a different personality. They have different, different interests, different, different things that they would be really satisfied pursuing. That's not encouraged. The, the, what's encouraged is go find a job. What's encouraged is go find some place that you can shove yourself into. Go find a square hole that you can stick your round peg and just fucking jam it in there and shave down the top and the bottom so you slide in with all this extra space on the sides and feel like shit for the rest of your life. Because you need a job. Because you're in debt. Because you have credit cards. Because you have student loans. Because that's what everybody does. And so you do it too. That's what's wrong. What's wrong is that we don't, like, we don't give, it's, it's like, we met, let them figure it out on their own, and it fucking takes forever. It takes, for, it took forever for me. My, the only thing that I had going for me that was that I was crazy, and that I had been spending most of my high school years fighting, so that I was already so far outside of anybody that I, I was so weird. I, I knew one thing, I couldn't work. Like a regular job, like I had to figure out something else, because like there's the idea of it was literally the idea of being in an office was like torture. Yeah, and the goal would be to have less unhappy, dissatisfied people. Because it creates a more stable yeah. society. And, well, it also happier. Yeah, it, it creates more more satisfaction. The people that I know that get to do what they want to do for a living, it's not like they're their lives are completely happy. Everybody's gonna That's face right. problems, yeah. no matter who you are. Your health is your engine. It your is. health is literally the the chassis, the tires, the brakes, the engine of your vehicle that you move through this life with. And too many people don't pay attention to it. It changes your ability to do things. If you don't have energy, not only will you not have the energy to pursue things, but you won't you won't be able to do them the same way. If you have energy and enthusiasm and say like you're healthy and you want to write a book, you're going to have thoughts that'll come into your mind that won't come into your mind if you're exhausted. And that's fucking huge. That's huge for anything you're trying to pursue, whether we're talking about furniture making, whether you're talking about being an author, whatever it is. The suggestion that I always give to people is write down things that you want to try to accomplish. Just write them down. Pretend there's a documentary crew filming your success story and they're following you around right now. What would you do? What would you do if you knew that there was a crew following you around with cameras documenting your future incredible success and they want to catch you in the act of it all? You would do all the right things you would have to do. Think about that. Organize it. But we're, we are saddled down by so many doubts and so so much just mental horseshit that keeps people from uh, from action. You know, I just I just feel like people need inspiration and they need guidelines. And if, if as long as you could just start moving just get action like you're just getting just movement don't be scared of failure i think failure is awesome for you and that's one of the reasons why like i said i like doing things that i suck at you know th there's you could get real complacent if you're really good at something and you only do that thing all the time i agree with that and you're not growing anymore yeah, yeah. you're just not challenged you're not like you're not at the bottom of the heap you know if you start jujitsu right now and you're a white belt you're like oh god what the fuck how, how could i ever get good at this and it's it's humbling but in that humbling thing you learn about yourself you learn about discipline and you build up that engine that muscle that is trying to work things out and figure things out you're creating a more formidable you yeah it's a good way to look at it but i just think um I mean, it's a fucked up thing. I mean, it's a weird thing to say, but I really think we all collectively, as a species, need to emphasize and learn how to be nicer to each other. Mm. Nobody teaches you that. It's rare. They teach to you in school, be nice. When you go to offices, there's, you know, there's certain standards of behavior that you're supposed to behave in, but there's not like an emphasis on kindness and just being friendly mm. and I think that that doesn't diminish competition right. like you can be friendly and kind to people that you're competing with as hard as you can mm -hmm. that is also a thing that you find in jiu-jitsu I just think as a as a species just the human race especially us as Americans because we're so goddamn competitive gotta learn how to be nicer yeah be polite and when people do that to you you get a good feeling you know well, you know when someone holds up in the door for you or someone says thank you like I said hi to some guy the other day. I was walking by him in the hallway of a hotel. I go, how you doing, man? And he just stared at me. And immediately I was like, what? 
I, I was angry. Yeah. You know, immediately, like, part of my instinct was like, fuck you, man. Yeah. But then part of me was like, that poor bastard. Right. You know, and I went with that poor bastard. Like, oh, that's his life. Right. I just said hi. Right. I'm just trying to be nice. Yeah. But he, like, looked at me like I was, almost like I was weak for yeah. saying hi to him. Right. You know? Like, I was Dang. raised to, like, like, if I see somebody with bags, I help them, and it makes me feel fucking great. Yeah, it feels good to help people. Yeah. Even thousands of years ago, they knew there's a right way to do things and there's a wrong way to do things. There's when you pick up the people's bags, you feel good. Let's tell kids that. Yeah. Let's teach people that. You pick yeah. up the bags, you feel good. You hold the door open, you feel good. You help someone, you feel good. Like, okay, let's. This is obviously, we all want to feel good, right? How do we feel? Like, I, there's moments in my life where I feel terrible, where I've done something wrong, or I've fucked up something, or just failed, and I just feel terrible. And I always think when I do have that feeling, like, God, I fucking hate this feeling. Why can't I feel great? Why can't I just feel awesome right now? Well, because it didn't go well. And this is like the psychic reminder. This is that jolt of energy that's letting you know, like, hey, you went on a wrong path. You fucked up. You you tanked this. You crashed that. You did wrong. Like, you're supposed to feel like shit right. so that you don't do it again. Yeah. But conversely, when something good happens, when you help someone, when someone can't get their bag in the overhead because it's too heavy and you help them and you hand it to them and they smile at you and you smile at them, you walk off the plane you feel good. Mm -hmm. You feel good. You got to teach that too. Like you have to remember that and you have to go, why do I feel so good? Oh, I felt so good because I helped that lady. Yeah. You know, I felt so good because I said hi to that guy and that guy said hi to me back and we looked at each other and go, you know, made some niceties or whatever. Yeah. And that's, that's part of the joy of life right. is those friendly, fun, nice interactions with people. But when you got your shit in order, it's easier to have those experiences. When you don't, my personal experience, when I don't have my shit in order, and I've made mistakes, and I'm, I'm, I fucked something up, it's very hard for me to enjoy anything. Yeah. I, I just go through the motions. I just, I feel like, oh, if I have something that I fucked up, and then um, I have that terrible feeling, but I have to hang out with my family and my kids, I just ride it out. Mm -hmm. I just have to ride it out. I'll, yeah. I try to be real friendly and real sweet, but I don't feel good inside. Mm -hmm. I feel terrible. And I go, well, this is going to go away with contemplation, with understanding. It's gonna, this feeling is going to go away, but you got to ride it out. Mm -hmm. you know? And I know I can ride it out because I've rid it out, wrote it out before. Yeah. But for some people, man, they don't know what to do there. Right. They, don't, they don't know what that feeling is. They feel like this is their life. And then that feeling, if you don't conquer it, you get comfortable with it. You get used to it. You get used to failing. You get used to that terrible feeling. And then you start pouring booze on that terrible feeling. Right. Or pouring drugs or whatever. Well, it also becomes like uh, I was in therapy. And I remember the therapist told me that you we all have a narrative of our lives. And you can choose that narrative. It's that fucking simple. That's basically what behavioral therapy tells you. Is that it's all a projection. Everything in your life is a projection. You know, you say, I have these attributes, I've accomplished these things, or you can say, I lack these things, and I fucked up these things. Mm. And you can live your life putting that energy out to people, and it's as simple as just literally sitting down and thinking about how you want to see yourself. Mm. And just keep keep reminding yourself of that, and you'll start to live it. I mean, this sounds so fucking hokey Does, and oversimplified. But it's real. But it's real. Your attitude has a giant effect, not just on your life, but on other people's lives around you. That's the other thing about it. Those I can't catch a break guys. Yeah. Get them the fuck away from me. I can't. I can't be around those guys. I don't want to hear that shit. I don't want to hear that shit. I don't buy it. Because everybody has bad breaks. Yeah. I've had a shit ton of bad breaks. But you know what I did? I, I stayed up. Yeah. And I thought through it. And I and I figured out what the fuck I did wrong. And then I went back. It's like, I fucked up everything I've ever done a hundred times. There's no way to other, there's no other way to do it. And I've had a bunch of shitty breaks. Everybody has. But you got to realize when you have those shitty breaks what that is. It's an opportunity for you to reassess, reboot, get better, figure out another way, find another way through. It's just, just little challenges. And the people that look at those challenges and go, why do I always have these challenges? They're cancer. Those people are dangerous to be around. They will rob you of your enthusiasm. They don't give you any fuel. They're the opposite of fuel. Yeah. Like the, the fuel people, 
They're the whole. The people tank. that are kicking ass. The people that are out there just fucking hustling. Always, always getting things done. The guy, like my friend Jocko, every morning I'll check his Instagram page. Four thirty shows a picture of his watch. Get after it. He's out there working out four thirty in the morning. He does it every fucking morning. Why? Because, because he doesn't want to. And that's how you do it. You go and get after it. You don't make any excuses. And those kind of guys are fuel. But those I can't catch a break guys, they're the opposite of fuel. They're just pissing on your fire. They're no fun. And, and then the, the people that surround them are all idiots. Because only idiots want to be around I can't catch a break guys. Yeah. Only the dummies stick around. After a while, even if they're your good friend, you got to be like, bro, you got to fucking stop. You got to stop with all this I can't catch a break bullshit. All the time you're complaining, you could be instead hustling. You could be instead chasing your dream. You could be instead figuring out what you're doing wrong, trying to prove certain aspects of your life, getting your shit together, reading a book, meditating, something. Fucking something. But this I can't catch a break shit is not helping anybody, and it pushes everybody away from you. But some people, they get caught in that pattern. And it might be their parents. It might be how they were raised. Somebody might have told them they were useless real early on. It's stuck. And they just, they always, they never feel like they get enough reassurance. They never feel like they get enough motivation.